Just want to welcome everybody this morning. I don't have any surprises like 70th birthdays or any other birthdays, or we're not going to get to sing this morning. Uh, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> so, but anyway, it's been a great week. And if you didn't get to come here, Wesley Putnam, you missed the Lord being in this house. He brought some beautiful stories. He touched everybody that was present. And I guess one of the most meaningful things that I felt when we finished up Wednesday night was Tom prayed for them. And we all gathered at the front. And you talk about that's when I felt that God was here. And he's leading Wesley and Felicia. Their stories and their music were just awesome. So we wish them Godspeed and safe travels wherever they go all over this United States. Um, in the way of announcements, uh, they've been up on the screen uh, basically this week. We have women's Bible study on Monday, men's Bible study on Tuesday. Those of us that are in the Gideon study will meet at 6 o'clock tonight. And uh, we have a special speaker today. I think we also have a short video, and Tom's going to talk to you about that. You faithfully gathered bottles of liquid detergent over the last few weeks, and, and I was blessed to take those on behalf of you and behalf of the Earth Church to Texas Boys Ranch on Tuesday. It literally filled up the cargo space of Rhonda's car. I mean, I had to stack bottles on top. There were that many. And the reason I chose to do that on Tuesday is they had their third annual, right, third annual prayer walk. And, and Michael had made a special trip over several weeks earlier to invite me to come and participate in the prayer walk. And there was, I don't know how many clergy and other members there, not just staff, but from churches, Plains, Muleshoe, Abernathy, Spur. I don't know where all else they came from. Some from Lubbock. But it was, it was a blessing just to, to walk the campus to see what the campus looks like, ground level. Walk from cottage to cottage different person or clergy praying for that cottage, those house parents and support the cottages to the commissary, to the barn, the maintenance building, the rec building, administration office, chapel. I didn't realize how big it was. But it was a blessing. And, and Michael's here to share today for us being Laity Sunday. Uh, when he made that special trip to invite me to come there, I seized the opportunity to, to invite him to come back and share. Because y'all get tired of hearing me. Don't say it, David. Are you listening to me? Are y'all misbehaving? I was, I was biting my tongue to keep it quiet. Good. Good. Those are, those are my children, Michael. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen up here. <clears throat> with those two. But it was a blessing. And uh, 
I'm glad Michael's here. We'll hear from him here in a little bit. And we're going to play a short video right now, not on Texas Boys Ranch, but on something we need to get geared up for because we've only got, what, three weeks, four weeks, four weeks? November 17th. November 17th. Would you play the DVD? Maybe. We turned it on. Yeah. You may have to move it. Jesus Christ. And the countdown happened. And your tears just erupt everywhere. They jump up with joy. They jump up with smiles. <laughs> Children here are so excited. And you can see their joy. They've just now got their boxes. They're opening them. And the fun is watching the children. And the excitement that they have. This could be the first present that they've ever received. These children just received the shoe boxes. You can see how excited they are. They cannot believe what is in there and they laugh. Christmas child gifts really touches children's heart. These kids around the world are receiving a box, but they're also receiving an invitation to the greatest gift of all, which is Christ. During distribution, we tell children that there is a God who created us and who loved us. This shoe box is a demonstration of the love of God. Jesus loves you. Ah, good. <laughs> we're here for Operation Christmas Child, and we're giving out shoe boxes to these children to symbolize God giving His gift, His Son Jesus Christ. Every box is a miracle, and these boxes that you pack make an eternal difference. This is about the gospel, taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, but doing it through a shoebox. And it's really a blessing to see these kids open up these gifts that you gave. Without you, we couldn't present the gospel of Jesus to these children. A lot of happy kids here. A lot of happy kids. Volunteers from all walks of life and all ages love packing Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Gifts. We are here at the Devil Ward talking to people about Operation Christmas Child. Some of the most memorable moments of my life was uh, delivering these Christmas gifts, seeing the impact that it made on these children's lives. What an amazing moment and opportunity to show people, to really show people the love of God. Just know a life is going to be changing. Pack a box. Pack a box. Go pack a shoe box. Shoe box time. All right, boys, fix the way. The journey of a shoebox starts with individuals packing shoeboxes. We're going to go in the store and buy them toys to put in this box. We love getting to take part in something that we know is going to be meaningful for all eternity. It's just a special opportunity to reach people with the love of Christ. I got the shoebox. It's an amazing experience working towards the same goal of reaching kids with the gospel. Father, we are so grateful for these boxes and what they represent. After shoe boxes are collected, processing centers around the country prepare them for the journey ahead. Samaritan's Purse would not be able to do Operation Christmas Child without this army of volunteers that come and give their time hour after hour. They're like angels. All of the people here are caring. Compassionate people. It's like working with family. To see those volunteers giving them their time, it blesses me so much because they are the ones that make my story and million of stories possible. Lives are being changed and souls are being saved, and the Lord is receiving the glory. So to God, I'm, I'm about to cry. Please. 
Once you pack the shoebox, from there they'll be sent all around the world. And that is only the beginning. We brought the shoeboxes across the river for the children to farm villages. Arriba las montañas. Ukibuka milima onde amcha to several English people's group. The day they got the shoe boxes, they were so excited. Yes, chocolate and pony, you know, wow, I did put on. I don't know, I don't even go to me, Jim. We didn't go to Jim. We got Jim out of school. After children receive gifts, we welcome them to the greatest journey 12 lesson discipleship program. The program introduces them to Jesus Christ and teaches them stories from the Bible. It sets a good Christian foundation for them and sends them on a brand new journey of life. After a child completes the greatest journey, they graduate and receive a certificate and a Bible in their own language. We started this greatest journey Bible study with the kids and that has continued until it became a church. The place was closed to the gospel, but in this greatest journey and the two box gifts, we've been able to do things that we were not able to do before. Isn't it incredible to see the impact these simple gifts are making in the lives of children all over the world? In Millions of boys and girls here and responding in faith and then taking the gospel truly to the ends of the earth. A lot of these children, their life is absolutely transformed. Jesus said, let them come to me. And we're in the middle of bringing the children to Jesus. What amazes me the most is the miracles in each box. Kids' lives are impacted throughout eternity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your continued support. Many children around the world still need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. We always need more shoeboxes. So keep packing. Thank you. And God bless. So you have in the next four weeks a chance to change the life of a child by bringing a little joy to their life, but also by bringing the word of Jesus Christ to them. So there are so you want to so there are shoe boxes in the foyer. They are flat. They don't look like this yet, but it's real easy to put it together. And also pick up a pamphlet with for each box. Because on the back it says boy or girl, and there are different ages listed, so you get to pick what you buy for and uh, fill them up and have them back by November the 17th, and we'll pray over them, and then we'll send them on to bless another child. So pick yours up in the foyer today. Thanks, Terry. And I think this is a neat deal. I had more fun filling up my shoebox last year of trying to figure out of course, I bought it for a girl because that's easier for me. But I took a special music box that I had, and I put it in that box. So I hope the young lady that got it is still listening to that music box. And I'll find something else a little bit unique to stick in one this year. I think I forgot a little bit ago. If you're visiting with us this morning, welcome. We'd ask that you fill out a visitor's card and put it in the offering plate. Fill out the pads at the end of the pews. Anything else, Tom? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we are so blessed, and it's all because of you. We thank you for this beautiful day, this church, for each and every one that is present here this morning to worship and to honor you. 
We ask that you be with those that need you in a special way. We ask for your hand of healing because we know your hand of love is always there. Go with us this week. Continue Wesley's effect that was had in this church this week. That we will be disciples that you want us to be. We ask that you bless the message that will be delivered, that we will become more aware of what this boys' ranch is all about, and that we know where our donations of soap and other stuff that we have sent are being used. We ask all of these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Let me uh, pull my mic down just a little bit. Once I start singing, it'll get it'll get loud. Uh, Jill stands as we sing him three three thirty seven. Only trust him. Verses one and two. <laughs> Soul by sin oppressed his mercy with the Lord, and he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Oh, we trust him, only oh, trust him, only oh, trust him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. For Jesus shed His precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Once known to the crimson flood, that washes white as snow. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. If you please be seated. If the kids would come forward to join Sally for children's time. Hey, I don't have a voice. It just went away. <clears throat> It'll come back. So, what's up today? Not much. Do you have your Halloween costume yet? You don't? You do. What are you going to be? Shadow Man? Awesome. So do you have your Halloween costume yet? What are you going to be? The Red Power Ranger? Those are awesome costumes. What's the best? There are two things about Halloween that I that we kind of like. One is we get to eat candy, right? The other is we get to be to pretend we're somebody we're not. Right? Yeah, that's kind of fun. You get to dress up like a Power Ranger or a Shadow Man. Is that it? Is he scary? Whoa. We can be scary. We can be happy. We can be pretty. We can be ugly. Right? We can make ourselves. Oh, people don't like happy costumes, huh? Wonder why that is. Well, I promise if you come to my house, even if you're not dressed up, I'll give you candy. It doesn't matter. Oh, I bet that would get. Oh, you get tons of candy if you're a kangaroo and has a baby that pops up out of your couch. I have an expert here that says that. That's awesome. Okay, but 
Okay, so now I want to tell you, though, about why you don't have to dress up to be anything. Because you're the best thing anybody could ever be already. You are a child of the one true king. You are a, ch a child of God, and there's nothing you can dress up that, to be that's better than that. Well, Jesus is the king, right? There you go. So God and Jesus, they, they go pretty close together in the Holy Spirit. They're right there hanging out together. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to give you a bag today, and there's stuff in it that I want you to help remember stuff. First, there's some suckers in there just because everybody likes a sucker, right? There's enough for you and enough to share. Then there's some little ghosts because sometimes we like to pretend that we're not what we're that we're something that we aren't. But the most important thing is hidden down here. Oops, I can't find it even. It's so hidden. I can't get it out. There it is. What is it? A heart it's a heart sticker. Because the only thing, I mean, you can't ever deserve to be the child of God. All you have to do is say, God, come right into my heart, and I will love you and follow you. And that's the most important thing you can ever do in your whole life, period. That's for kids, not adults. Nope, it's for adults, too. They, are, they need to really know that the most important thing they can ever do is to give Jesus their hearts. Okay, let's say a prayer. God, let's say a prayer. Dear God, open up my heart. Come running in and flooding in and burst my heart full of your presence so I know that I am your child. Amen. Okay, so I've got bags over here if I can get to them. I think I hid them from my <laughs> When I hide things, I do a good job. There's your bag. Do you want to take one to your little brother? Yeah. Okay. There you go. There's one for your little brother. And there's one for you. And one for your little brother. And there you go. Any blessing celebrations today? Good morning, everybody. I am blessed and celebrating that my mother is in town this weekend to visit. From Lynn Passes, we had a successful day of wedding dress shopping yesterday. So that's my celebration. I shared about carrying the laundry detergent to the boys' ranch, but they blessed the clergy there with an appreciation luncheon. So I celebrate that as well. I'm thanking God today for a wonderful family and a fabulous birthday. Thank you. God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. All right, please stand if you see in 539, the Spirit of Living God is going to you, and then how great thou art. Oh, Spirit of the Living God, the light and far divine. Descend upon the church once more and make it truly thine. 
filled with love and joy and power, with righteousness and peace. Till Christ shall dwell in human hearts, and sin and sorrow cease. O wind of God with wisdom blow until our minds are free from race of error, clouds of doubt which blind our eyes to thee. And winged fire inspire our lips with flaming love and zeal to preach to all thy great goodness, God's glorious common flash drive. Now slide it over. Slide it to the other monitor. all of our kids have been broken in some way they've been abused or neglected and so they just you know carry around I think a burden that it's really not their burden to have to carry but they've got it and we try to help them not eliminate that burden but deal with it and understand that It wasn't their fault or any of their doing that caused that neglect or abuse to happen. Start getting their attention here. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out and dump a little feed on the back of the truck. As y'all are out there, just. Them horses are going to go pushing each other around. Don't let one of them knock you down or something. Come on. Come on. 
Come on. Peanut, come on. You guys ready to go? What we try to do with our equine therapy, with every one of our clients, our kids that we have therapy for, one of our main goals that we always have is building self-esteem. Okay, so this time I'm going to give you a little bit of challenge before we get off, okay? You guys are going to go opposite ways, so that means at some point you're going to cross, right? You need, you need to talk and say how you're going to cross each other, all right? So, you go that way, you go that way, and watch out for each other and talk. Go for it. And if you run into... If you run into anybody else, you got to stop too. Good job slowing your horse down. When they come out here, they just, once they kind of get a, a bond with the horse, it's just easier for them to talk about you know, things from the past that weigh on them. It's pretty amazing to watch how the horses will change their attitude sometimes for a, a certain kid that we put on them. And most of the time, they, in my opinion, the horses will calm and humble themselves for a kid more than they will get aggressive for a kid. Tell you one kid we had. Uh, he had been going to therapy in the classroom or office setting for over six months. And uh, he had not opened up, told the therapist one thing. You know, his only response to questions, why was he out here? I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, she was a little concerned that they weren't making progress so I said, well let's schedule him and bring him to the horse barn the third session at the horse barn he opened up and shared more information with her in 30 minutes than he had shared in over six months and from that day forward he just started making progress oh that's how he keeps the flies off he stomps his feet and shakes. Why? How do you keep the flies off? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what he does. See there? He just kicked the fly off. You ready to get up there? First, you have to bring it over there with the step. Well, how about if I just pick you up? No. You want the steps, huh? You think that's necessary? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll wait on them then. Okay. Over you go. All by yourself. Uh, come on, come on, there you go. Oh, good job. Good job. Right. Right, right there, beautiful. Oh, All right. Can you turn a circle? Okay. They'll be standing there brushing their horse before they sidle, just talking to them. And it's let them get some of those feelings they had locked up in get them out they share them with their horse you know i couldn't tell you what they're saying i just know they're over there talking to their horse and uh, it does them a lot of good and they'll tell you you know those horses are their best friends right now morning church Morning. Come on, good morning, church.
Morning. Can everyone hear me okay? I don't want to be speaking here for two and a half hours and no one hear me. <laughs> you know, it's been about a year, a little over a year since I've been here. And everything has changed, but yet nothing has changed. Does that sound a little weird? Everything has changed at Boys Ranch since I've been here last, but yet nothing has changed. We have a whole new group of kids at Boys Ranch. Average age right now is seven years old. So everything has changed. We have a whole new set of kids since I've sat, sat, stood here in this auditorium last. So what does that mean? Nothing has changed. The neglect and abuse of children in West Texas is still the worst that it has ever been. So I really wanted to show that video because... Well, it's a reminder that I'm wrong, and I don't have to be married to realize that. <laughs> I was wrong because when I first got to Boys Ranch, I kind of knew how horses, well, I knew how what the cost was. Horses are expensive, are they not? And I thought to myself, shouldn't we be allocating our money toward the kids? I was wrong. We are. Through our equine therapy program. So, um, right now our average age is seven years old. And right now we are 50-50 boys and girls. And how many of y'all know who we are and what we do? Raise your hand. I want, I want y'all to come on, raise your hand. Do you, do you know who we are? Do we know what we do? Do you know where we're located at? Okay. We are located three miles east of Lubbock. We are not connected to any sort of denomination. We are a Christ-faith-based organization. We are our own separate 501c3. Many of y'all know that. Some of y'all don't. I got the question in, in, in Earth. Well, aren't y'all, are you a branch of that boys ranch up there in Amarillo? Nope. We're not. We are not connected to any other boys' ranch or children's home anywhere. We're separate. Currently, right now, we're serving close to 100 children. Between the ranch, foster care, and adoption, and our shelter, we're serving right now just over 100 children. That's a lot of kids. Last summer, one of our caseworkers, he came to me and told me, he said, we're averaging 12 calls a day for placements. Unfortunately, Boys Ranch kind of gives us a misconception that we're this strapping young teenage boy with problems. No, we just got an infant in the shelter th uh, three weeks ago. No, two weeks ago in our shelter. Uh, Four-month-old. I consider that an infant. Sorry. Four-month-old uh, addicted to cocaine, methamphetamines, and had a fractured skull. That's what we're dealing with. So, obviously, the equine therapy program is definitely needed. And I wanted to share that with you today. Um, Tom asked, actually asked me, and I want to thank Tom. Tom showed up to our prayer walk. We've been doing the prayer walk now for three years. And the great thing about the prayer walk is it gets a lot of different pastors and ministers and clergy all together in one spot at Boys Ranch to pray for us at Texas Boys Ranch. And planning it is awful. It's like herding kittens with ADD, trying to get all these pastors and preachers at one spot at the same time. So, and you actually have to ask the Baptist to get along with the Methodist and to put up with the Church of Christ. So, anyway. But it was a real blessing for Tom to be there. 
And it was great seeing all these people. We had about 70 people there all praying for our girls and boys at Texas Boys Ranch. And we need that every day. So you see, we can't be isolationists and sit over there three miles east of the airport and go, we can do this alone. We're fine. Y'all just, you know, go away. No. We need y'all to know what we're doing. We need y'all to show up and see what we're doing at Texas Boys Ranch. How many of y'all go to Lubbock once a month, once a week? Raise your hand. Anybody? Do you have a spare 20 minutes to swing by Boys Ranch and see what we're doing? Because I'd love to show you. We are a mission that you can come out and see. We're a mission that you can come out and go, okay, I've seen it. I know what they're doing. I believe in it. Because we need y'all. West Texas children need y'all. We got a real problem right now with neglect and abuse right now. It's bad. But guess what? There's good news. And the good news is sitting in this church. Y'all. Y'all can be the good news to our kids. Because like I said, we can't do it alone. The staff members, the house parents, the administration, the counselors, we need y'all. We need your help. So uh, Tom asked me to talk a little bit about myself, which I actually normally don't do that because I like talking about our kids. But how I got into this work, how I got into this mission field, and that's what exactly what this is. We are a mission. I worked at a, another children's home. My wife and I, when we got married, we got married and it seems like about 10 months later, hey, you ready to be a dad? No? Okay. My wife put a stipulation on what she wanted to do. She goes, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. I want to work full-time, and I want to get my degree and go to school full-time. What? <laughs> so, well, well, the only job that you can do that is be a house parent at a children's home. So my wife and I, we moved up to Amarillo, and we were a house parent at a different children's home for seven years. My wife went to West Texas A&M. She became a nurse. She was able to stay home most of the time with our daughter, and we raised eight teenage girls. So it was my daughter, my wife, eight teenage girls, and me. The dog didn't count. He was fixed. <laughs> I, like I said at the other church, it's where I really learned to love golf because if I played golf, no one followed me. It was great. So... Anyway, so while I was in school in Lubbock, I worked at Children's Home of Lubbock and Texas Boys Ranch. And, you know, and then we moved off to Amarillo and became house parents. When we came back to Lubbock after living in Amarillo for seven years, the president of Texas Boys Ranch and I reconnected. And that's how I ended up back at Boys Ranch and doing development. I've been doing this type of work now for since 2001, and, and I've been seeing this kind of work go on for a long time. And right now, right now, 2019, this is the worst that it has ever been when it comes to neglect and abuse. And we need y'all. And if anybody in here is thinking, well, you're, we're in Mule Shoe. Why are you talking to us? You're in Lubbock. Because we, the Texas Boys Ranch serves 41 counties surrounding Lubbock County. So we get kids from Sudan, from Milshu, from Leveland, from Littlefield, Brownfield, Shallow Water, Sweetwater. I don't think I need to go on. I think you all understand. We're getting kids from everywhere. My wife is a nurse at Covenant. She's way smarter than me. But she thinks I'm a mind reader. I'm not. So right now, I'd like to open up this time for any questions you have.
that I have not answered. I like questions. I love questions. So please, right now, if you have questions, I'd love to have the, a, a good dialogue with y'all. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, we have four cottages. We have the kids at the ranch, and there's eight kids per cottage. Then we have our shelter, which is near downtown, which used, used to be called the South Plains Children's Shelter. And it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No staff there sleeps. Kids sleep, but not staff, because it's a 24-hour awake shelter. Then we also have the ranch, and then we also have foster care and adoption. We have about 33 kids that are on the path to from foster care into adoption. We are our own licensed foster care and adoption agency. So, between the three of those agent, between the three of those departments, we're serving right at about 100 children. So, but thank, hey, thank you for the question. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Visitor from Land Passes? Question? <laughs> I've been there before a couple times. Three miles east of the Lubbock Airport. No. No, I don't. I know there's there's boys' ranches everywhere, and none of them are connected. That's that's the one of the worst stories I've ever – well, not worse. It's not worse. It's actually good, but it's what we run into. It's, hey, someone – some a, – a, a woman come up to me and said, hey, I sent that check up to Amarillo for you. Well, that's Cal Farley's. That's not Boys Ranch here in Lubbock. So, anyway. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That's fine. Are the children that you serve permanently removed from their homes, or are there some that are working, some birth parents that are working to regain custody? What you're talking about is what we call reunification. Reunification. Let me get. Let me tell you my own personal experience at being a house parent. As a house parent for seven years, took care of forty-seven children in seven years. We had one reunification. That's how often it happens. Yeah. So, I'll, that's it's hard. Once you get your child taken by CPS, are you willing to jump through the hoops? We're learning a lot of parents are not willing to jump through the hoops to get their kids back. That's where we have to step in and be the parent. Are there any other questions? Yes, thank you. Who is that? Yes, Roosevelt. All of our kids go to Roosevelt schools. Our rule is just because you graduate high school doesn't mean you have to leave. It used to be, not just us, all children's homes, no matter what, eight, no matter where you were in life at 18, you're gone. You're off the books. Now, at Boys Ranch, this doesn't happen very often, but the rule is you can stay until you're 22 as long as you have a job and or going to school of some sort and are following the rules. But that's what we're doing. We, the difference is, we are getting kids younger and getting them adopted. We've had 41 adoptions in four years. I'm very proud of that. That's a big deal. So if we get them younger, we can get them adopted and into permanent homes. That's the goal. But we're not kicking kids out at 18. I wasn't ready at 18. I'm 40, and I'm still not ready. Are there any other more? Yes, sir. There it is. That's the question I was looking for. Why is this happening? Because we were designed back in 1975 to where if mom and dad died in a car wreck or if grandma and grandpa can't raise the kids anymore, that model is done. And it's one thing that's causing this neglect and abuse. Methamphetamines. When we were a house parent, at one point, we had eight girls in our cottage because they were there because their parents dabbled in 
methamphetamines in some form or fashion, whether they are making it, selling it, or, or taking it. That's what's happening. Meth is crushing West Texas families. But the good news is y'all can help us out. And we need the help. I invite all of you to come out and see what we're doing at Boys Ranch. I have a cell phone number. Call me. I want to show you what we're doing. I'm proud of what we're doing. I hope someday, Tom, I don't have a job. Wouldn't it be great if I didn't have a job? Hey, Amen. Wouldn't that be what? amazing if I was unemployed or I had to go sell hammers at Lowe's? That'd be great. Because that means that we have broken the cycle of neglect and abuse. But we can't do that without y'all. We really can't. Anyway, please help us with our mission in sharing Jesus, healing hearts, and transforming lives. Thank you. One statistic that you shared Tuesday, and you shared in Earth, and maybe I missed it earlier, is the kids that come that are school age are yes. two years behind Educational. their peers. Yes. On average, our kids come to us behind two years behind educationally because when you're neglected and abused, you're go you when you're a child, when you're five, six, seven years old, you're not worried about kindergarten. You're worried about living. When you're neglected and abused and your parents start feeding you or taking <clears> care of you. You know, school gets put on the back burner, but that's where we come in. We have programs to catch these kids up, and Roosevelt Schools has been amazing. I want to say that Roosevelt Schools have been tremendous in understanding that all of our kids have educational issues. So, we've we've encountered that same, maybe not two years behind, mm -hmm. but through Snack Pack for Kids, right? We find that kids that don't have food on the weekends. It takes them until after lunch Tuesday to start responding and learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, same premise. Same, same, same thing. Yep. If it's not at home, it creates a major problem. Are there any other questions? Are we going to beat the Baptist lunch? <laughs> the only one around here that worries about that is David. <laughs> anyway i'll stick around if you think of some questions i'll be here after church so please ask me anything you want and come out and visit us i'll give you my card we'll schedule a tour i love showing what we're doing okay thank you keep us in your prayers please thanks michael if our ushers would come forward please Loving God, you meet us in the strangest places because we put ourselves there. Yet you are the faithful one, equipping us to meet the needs that we encounter. Receive our gifts this morning. Bless the gift and bless the giver, equipping us once again to rise to meet the needs and to give you all glory. We ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all body, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. As we sing our God, maybe God's speaking to you. Maybe He's tugging at your heart. Maybe it's to recommit your life to Christ. Maybe it's to make that first time commitment. Maybe it's to unite with this body of Christ in membership. Whatever God is tugging on your heart for, maybe it's just to come and kneel and pray, to lift up a personal need. And if, if you want to come and you would like for me to pray with you, simply extend your hands, palms up on the rail, but come as we sing. What are you turned into mind? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, no one like you. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, no one like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, no one like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is stronger, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, 
awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? Then what could stand again? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Come here, Michael. If you want to lay hands on Michael step down I'm going to pray over Michael if you want to lay a hand on him just come and do so turn around and face me Michael in the name of the Father in the name of the Son in the name of the Holy Spirit Father God I thank you for Michael for the friendship that's developing between us, but more importantly for who he is and how he serves the kingdom. I lift up his wife and daughter as well. And as Michael travels, keep him safe. Protect him in every way. Protect them in his absence. Father, just continue to use Michael to further the ministry of Texas Boys Ranch and the lives that they are touching and the way they are making a difference. We give you all praise and glory and ask it in your precious name, Lord Jesus. All God's children said, Amen. 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 As you go forth, whether you're packing a shoebox, shopping for the stuff to go in the shoebox, as you rise to meet the challenges, do it for God's glory. Seek new ways to be the hands and the feet of Christ in the kingdom as loved children of God empowered by the Holy Spirit in Jesus name Amen, Amen. <clears throat> Come every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now.